start calling you Pastor Meg. <laughs> I'm definitely putting that as your name in my phone. Pastor Meg. I am not. All right. I told you. Brenda. I said the same thing. <laughs> Brenda. Lord. When it's on you, bro, you can't help it. I don't care where Brenda. you go. Oh, we ain't started yet. You want me to wait for the podcast <laughs> to say it? It's, bro, it's on you. When something is on you, it means it's a decision God made about you before you were born. You cannot change his mind. And stop thinking about it in the capacity in which we've seen it already. Because yeah. it could look completely different. I'm... It could look like a podcast with cameras <laughs> being pastoring people through lenses. Who knows? Who who am I? Just a pastor. Yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a preacher. Who am I? Yourself. Just out God. Here. That makes me hot. <laughs> it does. Like my armpits are stinging. I'm not joking. What? That makes <laughs> Just Jesus. It makes me hot. It does. Edges is sweating. Like, that makes me hot. Why does it make you hot? I just, the responsibility of. You have it anyway. But Brenda. (laughs) (laughs) You you have it anyway. Are we starting? (laughs) We started. Hi, y'all. Jesus. Brenda. Y'all, welcome to. To in totality, I am your host, and I have a guest, and she's making me sweat. <laughs> How you starting off sweating? Hi, Brenda. Hi, man. I'm so excited you're here. I'm happy to be here. I'm honored. Are you? I am. I'm honored. I'm glad. I'm and glad I, w- glad to I be saw here. you in this outfit, and I wanted you to leave. Like, I want you to leave it. I'm gonna give you some sweatpants mm. and a t-shirt, and you could just have it. Yeah, and I you can just that. leave that here. Got you. And I will get you something to wear on the way home. And then we <laughs> can take fine. it. Yeah. This is fine. It's yeah. Fine. You it's said fine. outfit is too cute. I need it. Well. <laughs> I need it. Or at least tell me where you got it from <clears throat> off my. And then, yeah, yeah, because um, we. <laughs> yeah, we can gatekeep. They got to pay, pay us for that one. <laughs> they got to pay us for that. Listen, it gets to that point, though. It's like. Yeah, it does. It gets to that point. For sure. Like. Because I people be like, oh, my God, I bought. Nope. That's why, honestly, I I started an Amazon storefront. I need to. Because there were so many books that I was like, get this book or get this journal or get this. And I was like, you know what? Let me. I was definitely brand ambassador for all I've got. Every conversation. That was me and Beta Satan. I probably have sent, I don't know, probably over 100 copies to people. Yeah, it's crazy. It changed my. Did you read Beta Satan? Nope. Brenda. I know. Everybody brings it up. I'm I'm, guys. Okay. Let me get through all I've got. All right. (laughs) Did you. you, Are you finished? uh, where are you I'm at? Taking my time, very slow. Like, are you on like chapter one, six? Okay, you tried it. I, you tried it. You, the way you was looking. One, no, it's crazy. Hey. One, no, it's crazy. We've been talking about this for six weeks. <laughs> one chapter one is crazy, and no. I need to be ashamed. So he did say. So I actually have that book here. I actually have both of them. Come on, I have John Beta Satan. John Bevere is hero. Okay, because he, him, and Lisa do not care. They don't care how you feel. And when I tell you I look up to them, my eyes watering so bad. I look up to them in a way that is like, I love them. No, for sure. Like parents. Like I look at them as like spiritual aunt and uncles or yeah. parents. They are just their boldness. And and I don't know if it's like, because I feel like John Bevere has probably always been that way. And Lisa both. Yeah. But I think something comes with age. Where you just. I cannot wait. <laughs> there are a lot of things I'm storing up. So, I mean, my old age. What says it don't matter? Like I've when, earned the when, right to say this. When the Bible <laughs> says the Lord is storing up wrath, so am I. I'm storing it up. You said, remember twenty years ago? Yeah, because I wanted to tell I you. I cannot that. wait to do like a twenty year ep- like anniversary episode, <laughs> and I'm just going. You said, there. Here are the things. All the things I've been holding. I can't wait. So anyway, I have both of these books because they are on my Amazon storefront, and these books changed my life. Yeah, no. And what I love about the All of God, um, it's you're actually supposed to read it a chapter a week a, yeah right? oh i've been doing a chapter a day is it a chapter a day or a chapter a week was it a chapter a week i think it's a, a chapter week? a week oh which well, is well, which is you're doing good. i'm i'm right up there you, you, I, you are ahead of the thing, curve okay? i started reading it it got too real i said wait a minute <clears throat> that's why you I, to... I need to pause this yeah because i need to get in the right posture yep. for this. i didn't actually direct my, i read the intro to the intro yeah. and i was like i never felt the presence of god reading the book yes and i'm like Oh, okay. Yes. Let me go. We go do some. Yes. Get some stuff together. And I'm yes. Come back to it. I those book all of his books, um, 
And I haven't, obviously, I haven't read all of them, but I've read these two. And I've had to have, like, you have to digest it. Yeah, yeah, yeah for like, sure. Like, you have to have a real, like, Sila moment yeah. when you are reading these books because they're not. And what I love about it is that he's not, like, sugarcoating anything. No. <laughs> it's like, you're offended. Yes. You're, like, you have no reverence for the when Lord. When he tells the, like, the it's church crazy. that the Brazil church. The way he read them, I said. The way he read them, I said, "Oh, oh, you not about to read me like you read them." <laughs> he did read them. He I did. and I pray when I read that. I the the major thing that I prayed was for that type of boldness. Yeah, to do whatever God says to do without a care, without a care, and we, and it was crazy. I know we just kind of like random we jumped did. into it. We, we just, just jumped into it because it's because why not? It's what it is. But <laughs> I was I was talking to my um, Patreon community last night, and one of the girls asked a question about, um, you know, she, a friend. She felt like God wanted her to tell her friend something, mm-hmm. or like give her a warning, or tell her like what you're doing isn't right, and she was hesitant. Yeah, and she was scared, and it reminded me of Jeremiah. When the Lord tells him, don't look at their faces. Nope. And that is a thing that I feel like for you and I right now in this space, yeah. we're going to have to have that yeah. level of boldness. For sure. And not look at the faces of people. No. And <clears throat> I also don't want that responsibility. You know, like the <laughs> weight of being disobedient. Because somebody's life could depend on what I need to say. Literally. And I, I hold that all the time. And it's like... We always talk about the account we got to give at the end of our life. It's not just for what you do. It's for what you didn't Don't, do. Ooh. So I Both. have to also say, well, I didn't do this because I was afraid. No. In Jeremiah and Ezekiel, he said, mm-hmm. if you don't say this, the mm-hmm. blood, blood is, is on, on your hands. hands. Now I'm good. I'm straight. You can't have your own blood. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it on I my I don't hands. want it. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm like, it is what it is. It's easier when it's people you don't know. It's harder when God's asking you to speak against people or speak against the behaviors of people mm-hmm. that you love. Mm. That's hard. We talked about this a little bit the yeah. other day. And I, that's really what I want to... I, I want to <laughs> get... <laughs> you said this is really what I want to talk about. <laughs> I really want to get into that because um, I feel like we're in unique spaces Right now, as the level of our influence increases Mm -hmm. in this time. Mm -hmm. And I'm always asking God, I'm like, why this time? Uh, Listen, I say, you really trust me. You know, I always said I didn't want to be born in slavery time because I wouldn't have lasted. I wouldn't have. But, (laughs) you know, on second thought, civil rights movement era, you know, maybe a little bit there because I'm like, Lord, this this is crazy. This is different. It's crazy. Do you feel that like... Being in this space and, like you said, having to, like, be bold Mm -hmm. and say some things that are hard because it might come up against somebody that you maybe had admiration for or even, you know, honor for. And now as you get deeper in in God's word, I know for me at least, as I got deeper in God's word, I'm starting to see things that I'm like, this isn't. This isn't okay. For sure. This isn't right. And I'll be okay if it w- it just could end at the sea. But then. <laughs> it's it's the call to address. And I'm like, you sure? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Um, it, it is. I, I, I do. I, I battle with yeah. that. And sometimes I'm like, especially because I'm like, I'd ask for this. You know? I was behind the camera. That part. Never, no, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody cared what I had to say. Yeah. When I had 2,000 followers. <laughs> Nobody cared. <laughs> Nobody cared what I was doing. And now I overthink everything. Man. I'm like, um. Man. What is this me? Ah. Uh, what, right? are, what are What are they going to, ah. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Okay, so before we get into all those things, tell me, um, give me a background just on who you are. But girl, who are you? All your thing, all the things. But I have to tell y'all because Brenda gave me a bit of her testimony. <laughs> and when now she told me. The no, I am because the way you did not, the way you did not 
at all brace us. Hey, how are you supposed to say, hey, I'm about to say something you, that's going to really... Just like that. What? I'm about to say something, and I need you to be prepared. You were like, I, said, I didn't have capacity. <laughs> I said, Brenda. <laughs> I said, you did not ask me if I had the capacity to do that. You have to ask people, do you have the capacity for you my got- testimony? Because it is, <laughs> it's a curveball. That is come. crazy. You need to ask Can people that. Can you imagine a testimony service and you go to the mic like, do you guys have capacity no. for what I'm about to share? The way, the way your testimony is, you need to brace. So I'm going to do what she didn't do, y'all. I'm going to brace y'all. Dang. So she's going to tell you, and it's going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, you're going to listen to this. <laughs> and you're going to be like, yeah, all right, okay, God is good, all right, see. Wait, what? <laughs> this is... Say I'm again. finished. So, Brenda, please tell me. Now you people, hyped it up, though. No. You said it doesn't need no... <laughs> tell these people. Uh, oh, my goodness. Okay, guys. I'm Brenda. Palmer. Brenda Palmer. I'm from Chicago. Uh, I currently live in LA. Um, I I don't know. I yeah, I don't know where to start because you didn't <laughs> add it that in there. Okay, so you so you so you are used to being behind the scenes. You've been in church your whole life. For sure. Life. Okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. So. That's usually where yep, I go. You yeah. threw me completely yeah. off, bro. Well, I had to warn them. You didn't have to warn them. Yes, I did. It needs the shock value. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Y'all going to see, y'all going to see, y'all going to be like, I did not see that coming. I was in my car like, it was dead silence for at least like 20 seconds. I have to get, because like, at first I didn't used to give time for reaction. I would just be like, yeah, because, and then like finish telling the story. Yeah, I'm glad you gave me a minute to pause. I <laughs> I've had learned to that. gather learned that. myself, my edges, and all, okay? All right, so um, my parents are pastors. So you're um, PK. I'm a PK. I grew up in church. I actually never wanted anything to do with church uh, so my background is in production so I went to school for communications I went to grad school at Syracuse um to oh, study nice. yeah I went there for I literally lived everywhere I did undergrad <laughs> in Mississippi I did grad school in New York I wow. from Chicago and now I live in LA wow so I've hit all the corners yeah um so I originally went to school to be a producer. I uh, love content producing, behind the scenes. Um, I've worked at TBN. I've done stuff for Tidal, for BT, like all those things. Like I really love that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I moved. Originally, I was going to move to LA in 2014, and then stuff started falling apart, and I'm not built to live in my car. <laughs> so I was like, it's giving. The Lord might want me to wait. <laughs> and I'm going to wait because I can't be homeless or poor. I just wasn't built for that. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for it. I got a good daddy, and he takes care of me. <laughs> and even if I was in LA, he would still do the same. Uh-huh. But I was like, no, I can't do it. And so I ended up, um, I was like working at H&M, like doing random stuff. And then I started um, on staff as like a social media associate, like helping Mm -hmm. them build social media out. Then I progressed, excuse me, into like running media. And then I built a creative team. I was running production every Sunday. I was handling like uh, the pastor at that church. He like. He wrote <clears throat> books. He did music. So I was doing like tours and I was running oh, audio. Wow. Like I was every skill I have used in the real world came from serving at church because you do yeah. everything. <laughs> for sure. I was, in a, I was all the things. <laughs> and so I did that um, maybe for like um, three years. Mm-hmm. I did that. I was on staff full time there. They're like my second family like Mm. they're my spiritual parents I had keys to their house like I traveled with them like I was her armor bearer so I would literally I lived in the city she lived in the suburbs I would drive from the city to the suburbs pick her up to take her to a small group take her back home drive back to the city like I was serving Mm. and so like um maybe roughly I have to tell this part because I visited LA in 2016 and felt Mm. like God told me to move in April of 2017 Mm. and I went back like in November told them like I'm gonna move in April top of the year my supervisor quits he doesn't come back from Christmas break so I'm like all right cool I can't leave them Mm. like who's gonna like who's gonna do my what I do yeah he already quit like what am I gonna do about that so I stayed out of loyalty which was really disobedience because God said a thing. Mm. And so fast forward, April of 2018, I was dating a guy who I had been friends with for 10 years. And then we started dating and I found out that he was like in a relationship with my pastor, my male pastor. She said, I had to give you a minute (laughs) to process that. 
Well, you you landed it a lot softer than you did the other day. I Girl, appreciate that. It's because you can't. I appreciate that. But that is wild. You yeah, know, it's pretty crazy. Pretty like crazy experience too. Like, um, but I will say this, um, because the only reason I continue to share it mm-hmm. is because we will experience things in places where we're supposed to find God. Mm -hmm. And when our hearts are broken in that space, we leave God. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like the fact that I do what I do, Mm -hmm. like as a preacher, as someone who gets to communicate the gospel is like, in spite of that, I'm still rocking with God because someone's humanity doesn't diminish God's divinity. Right. Like it doesn't diminish his love for me. I know that that is not, aligned with the character of God. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to walk away from God because someone was human. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And so I feel like in that season, though, I learned God's heart Mm. because nobody in that church would have known I was going through that because I found out in April, it didn't come out until Mother's Day. And when I say come out, I mean like within the group of people. So Mm -hmm. I was holding it. So I knew. Oh, so you knew this was a secret. But I didn't say anything. And so, like, it was like, I, cause I found out, and I can't disclose how I found out, cause I ain't trying to, you know, but I found out. And it's just like, I would like kind of watch them interact <clears throat> for weeks. And I just like, I held it. I didn't tell anybody. Did you, did they know you knew? Nope. I actually never intended to address it. I was just going to quit and move on with life. <laughs> like, I didn't intend, because m- what I kept saying was, like, I, for whatever reason, this is why I think like when we talk about gifts, mm-hmm. like being a pastor is about your heart, not about what you do on a platform. Mm-hmm. And my first response to my trauma and my devastation was other people. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't want it to affect other people. Mm-hmm. I, I have a different, I'm a different type of person. Mm-hmm. So I can separate the two. Everybody can do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So I immediately went into protection mode. Like, wow. how do I make sure this doesn't get out? And wow. so I genuinely was not going to say nothing. I was just, but I was like dying a slow death because I was internalizing everything. So I was like, I'd lost so much weight. I was breaking out. I was, and I would come home because I was living with my parents at the time. My mom would be like, are you okay? I'm like, no, nah, I'm not. <laughs> but I can't tell you because my parents were also going to the church. Everybody, it was my entire world was connected to this space. My community, my family, so it's kind of like, it's just me. And so I remember my mom, she would be like, Brenda, I'm like, no, nah, I can't tell you if you want to know, you should ask God. And she did. And I came home one day and I was like, she looked like I felt. Oh my gosh. And I was like, you good? And she was like, nah. And God told her. And she said, Holy Spirit revealed to me, dot, dot, dot. And I was like, oh, you walk with the father. <laughs> You know him, know him, because verbatim. No. Verbatim. And then I told her who it was. And then for the first time in that situation, I could cry. Wow. And still, like, was kind of just navigating it or whatever. And then when they found out that I knew, it was like a series of conversations. I didn't leave the church right away. Like, God didn't release me right away. That happened in April. They found out I knew in May. And then I went on, like, a 30-day like for the month of June or like May to June, I came to, I went to LA and God was like, it's time to move. But I never went back to work there, but I still served at that church every Sunday until I moved to California, August of 20. Wow. August 28, 2018. Wow. And pay my tithes. Wow. Cause somebody be like, you ain't getting my money. My tithes ain't about a person. Oh, I'm going to be obedient until God releases me. Wow. And I did. I stayed there and served there. And I remember that pastor telling me in conversation, he's like, you proved to me how real God is. Because he never knew I knew by the way I treated him because I still honored. Wow. Brenda. You have to, bro. It's like... I, and I again, I don't take any credit for it because I can't even articulate how. Yeah, for sure. It was the grace of God. Yeah, for and sure. And I literally turned off the world. I wasn't listening to music. I wasn't watching TV. I was like going home, watching sermons, reading my word, talking to God and saying, if you don't get me through the day, I'm not going to make it. <clears throat> oh, and my like, God. yeah, like interacting with them. Like it was. So let me ask you, did when he said that to you, like, I know God is real because of how you've treated me. Did anything change in him? 
Like, did he change? Did he <laughs> repent? Did he turn? Did something happen? Did he sit down? Did he get a seat? A stool? I don't know, bro. Did he cop a squat? <laughs> you know, I feel like the Lord deals with people. And that's, <laughs> that's how we have to... It, I can't be concerned. Yeah, got it. I just, yeah, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, dang, I wouldn't wish that on nobody. But I'm grateful that happened because the level in which I know God on, yeah. wouldn't, I wouldn't have experienced him that way without that part right. of my life. Right. And I, I can totally relate to not the story. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot relate to that. I cannot. It's not, not the story. I yeah, not, most, most people can't, which I'm, well, I would say most people can't, but. All right, guys, before we continue on with this episode, just a quick announcement. Black representation in media is super important to our community as it promotes diversity, challenges stereotypes, and allows for more authentic storytelling. It helps foster a sense of belonging and can positively impact societal perceptions and breaking down biases. Tabitha Brown, Ava DuVernay, Viola Davis, Issa Rae all have made significant contributions to film, television, and media paving the way for more diversity and inclusion. The next generation of influential Black voices can be found on NPR's new collection, Black Stories, Black Truths. Black Stories, Black Truths is a celebration of Blackness from NPR. Each of NPR's Black voices are distinct, varied, and nuanced as the Black experience itself. In the Black Stories, Black Truths collection, you'll hear stories of joy, resilience, empowerment, and creating world-shifting things out of struggle. Every episode is a living account about what it means to be Black today, told from a unique Black perspective. From Bobby Shmurda to The Wire, Michelle Obama to Reparations, there's no limit to the range of Black stories and Black truths. I recently listened to an episode entitled A Taste of Freedom. This episode talks about Juneteenth and the day that the enslaved Texans found out more than two years after Emancipation Day that they were free. Black perspectives haven't always been centered in the telling of America's story. Now, they are the story. In NPR's Black Stories, Black Truths, you'll find a collection of some of NPR's best podcast episodes celebrating the Black experience. Hear a feed of episodes from across NPR's podcast that center Black voices. It's NPR's Noir. Turn on NPR today and hear a range of voices that are varied, nuanced, and Black. Stories should never be about us without us. Listen now to Black Stories, Black Truths from NPR wherever you get podcasts. All right, guys, back to the show. Me sharing my testimony happened to be my first episode of my podcast, one of those yeses mm -hmm. to God, because I wasn't out here trying to do mm -hmm. that. And the amount of people that would DM me. Saying they had a similar story. Very similar. With pastors? Still today, like, Megan, with, last week. But, like, with, last the, with their week, principal, not their pastors, right? Last week. Brenda. Last week in 2024, somebody said, man, I'm watching your story and I identify. I don't want you to identify with that. And then I understood why I had to share it. Because I intended to take it to my grave. Because I also carried a level of shame around it. For sure. Like, and there was a process. There was a time where I couldn't tell it without crying. There was a wow. time where I couldn't tell it without reliving the emotions. Because like, I think everybody sees it like, oh, you're a pastor. No, let's talk about what that means for me as a woman. <laughs> that the person I was dating yes. chose someone else. Like a different, yeah, yeah. It's like I'm like, no, there are a lot of things I had to navigate that I wow. didn't get to process until I moved to LA because I was pastoring everybody else through my own trauma. Now, do you feel like you would have done it the same way where you are now in the sense of because I believe <clears throat> everything that you said was so admirable, and I believe it's the hard posture that God wants us to have in the sense of no, like that pastor and that family didn't know that you felt any type of way, even though you knew something. Yeah, yeah. Until, it, until they did. Oh, and then yeah, they... Yeah, yeah, okay. because I found out in April, we ended up having a conversation in May because mm -hmm. I was going to... I literally was dying. Mm -hmm. Like, so that part, like internalizing it, no. But also, I had never been to therapy. Nobody taught me. I didn't have tools. Yeah. I didn't have tools to navigate that. Yeah. I'm like, what do I do about yeah. this kind of thing? Yeah. And so it's like, I think in that sense, I definitely wouldn't have done it that way. Um, but I think 
in our initial conversation, there are some things that I probably would have done differently. Wow. But I, I, I think I still would have stayed if God didn't release me. I think I still would have done majority of the things the same way, except for I probably would have moved to California the year before. Or, so I didn't have to go, go through, through that. that. For sure. For <laughs> sure. For sure. And it's, I feel like we, like, and I said this on another episode, Um, I feel like, some of the harder things that we deal with in life and like the most painful things are really a mercy yeah. because yes. you find this intimacy with the Lord that mm-hmm. I never you would have never had, no. had something painful. And like, I hate, like, I don't want people no. to have to go through no, you should pursue pain God. like that. <laughs> you should pursue God. <laughs> and, it's like, and let then us- he ain't got to <laughs> hem you up by your neck. And just shake your entire world. Let like, us oh, help. All you. I want is Jesus. Jesus. Let us help you. <laughs> don't don't this, go. You don't have. You don't want to go through the book in the mire. You don't. Like, bro, last year was such a hard year. Yeah. And I'm thankful for it. Yeah, but. But it's like. I, I do if it. I If I can keep other people. For sure. From having to go through some like really unnecessary pain yeah. just to draw them closer to the Lord. I just, like like Brenda said, just, just surrender. Yeah. Just, For sure. Just surrender. Because I have to acknowledge the fact that God told me to move a year before. Yeah. It was a year to date. He said April 2017. That happened April 2018. Wow. There is a grace in yeah. obedience. There's a covering. Yeah. And not like God out here trying to, get his lick back because right. I didn't listen to him. Petty. No, but he could see it before I could. Yeah. And I could have, I couldn't, I should have just obeyed him even in my unknowing. Yeah. But instead it's like, nah, I don't, yeah. they need me. And yeah. he's like, I'm trying, I'm trying to save yeah. you. And I, I was telling um my Patreon community last night, we have these live Zooms on, on Thursdays and I was telling them last night, I'm like, you feed two different things when an opportunity to obey comes. Mm-hmm. When you're, when you obey, you're feeding the obedience. So the next time God tells you to do something, it's easier yep. and quicker to obey. Yeah. But if he gives you something to do and you don't obey, you're feeding disobedience, yeah. which makes it easier to tell the Lord no yeah. when he tells you to do something. And so I feel like, especially right now, like I knew that, This year, like, obedience was, like, a big thing. And I feel like if we're not, like, this is not the time to play around. Yeah. When he gives you something to do. No, do it. Do it. And and there's this misconception that you got an option. (laughs) You have a will, but you don't have Have an option. There, It's obedience. It's, you are either... In obedience or you are practicing witchcraft because it tells you that rebellion is witchcraft. We don't we want to talk about it like that. We don't want to say, say yeah. no to God. It's like, oh, I just said no. That's not cute. <laughs> and you wonder why your life upside down. Well, you're practicing witchcraft. All right. Brenda. I'm just saying. we can't Because people are like, how do you obey? How do you not? You don't have an, <laughs> you don't have an cho- option. You don't have a choice. You I mean, said you have a choice. You have a will, but you don't have, have you don't have an option. option. Yeah. If I'm. When we when you take that long walk down that aisle, say yes to Jesus. However, you took the walk because some of y'all taking it in the comments on Instagram, and I love and that. I love that for you. I love that. If that's what you got to do, but when you say yes, <laughs> I need you to know what it means. We need to give disclaimers instead of saying, "Come on, say yes to Jesus." He gonna give you everything you ever dreamed of. That's a lie. You probably gonna lose everything. <laughs> like that's your not dreams true. are. They ain't no. I don't have them. They belong to him. They belong. Everything belongs to him. I don't have another option. It's like, Linda. what is the process? Just say yes. Just say yes. Because you're going to give a yes. you either going to give it now or you're going to give it under pressure. You're going to be like, oh, I should have. You don't have another option. As a believer, your life does not belong to you. What it- do you feel? Why do you feel? Okay, before I even get into that, because I remember I told you the other day, I was like, I want you to watch The Pilgrim Progress. Yes, and I forgot. It's okay. I want you to watch it because there's a part in the beginning. So basically, it's about this guy who's going on his journey. He mm-hmm. feels this burden and this call for the Lord. Yeah. And he is like trying to get his family to come. He's like, come on, we have to get to this gate. And like, God is calling us to do this and this mm-hmm. and that. And um, I had to like, I warn you guys, just like I warned you, this <laughs> animation is, is really, said, it's it's little... really bad. But 
but the story is so good. So anyway, he he takes this burden on it. So it's like this backpack, but this is the burden that the Lord has given okay. him, right? And he heads on his journey. And so his two friends come. And do you remember their names, Jordan? One was, um, dang, I forget their names. But there was two friends that are trying to convince him to come back home. It's mm. like, bro, you tripping. You left your wife and your yeah. kids. Like, you are wilding out here. Like, come, like, you're 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 losing it. Like, you can't do this. And so one friend is, like, super negative, And the other friend is like, well, I mean. It's different. Okay. Like, maybe. He's like, well. And so the guy, the character's name is Christian. And so Christian is like telling his friends, like, you don't understand. The streets are paved with gold (laughs) and it's amazing. And God's going to, God's going to, God's with us. And he's telling them all these great things. And so the one obstinate and Pliot, those are the two friends' names. And I think it's Pliot who decides to join him on the journey okay. because it sounds like this amazing yeah, he journey. Like, He's like, it. oh, why not? Streets of gold and, you know, it's <laughs> going to be all these amazing things. So they go, They so the other friend leaves and, and um, Pliot stays and Pliot and Christian are going on their journey. And their first encounter, they get caught in the mud. Mm. They're in the mud. Mm. Like, he, and his friend is like, this like this is this not, is not this is what not you said. Paved with gold. This is not what you said, <laughs> and it and it showed me how like we can. When you said disclaimer, how real we need to be, and how I feel that like even with like with my podcast and all the things that I do, I want to be so transparent yeah. and honest about it. That's why I said in totality and not part like yeah, yeah. just the good part. This no. is this like. We need to be clear about what this walk really is like because I feel like what happened to apply it is what happens to a yeah. lot of people. And then they like, this is not, this ain't it. And that, that you told me the Lord wasn't going to leave us. You said the Lord, we was going to be. You said I was about to get my breakthrough. You you said you said I was about to be flexing on my haters. <laughs> it's like that's dumb, and that, <laughs> I wish y'all stopped doing that. I really. I really, for real, because I really feel like yeah, you yeah. making my job harder. Now I got to get on the Instagram live and debunk all the myths y'all done made about Jesus. <laughs> now, now I have to do extra work. Now I because ha- because here, okay, we are supposed as preachers, pastors, teachers, evangelists, apostles. Ephesians four says to equip mm-hmm. the saints. That's mm-hmm. why you exist. Mm-hmm. To you exist to Tell equip. Them. Tell them. You exist to equip. Okay, you're not preparing anybody with a call to Jesus about what He's gonna do for you. He's Bring, already done through this. What He's gonna do? He's already done it. He died, <laughs> and you still got breath in your body. That's enough. Cause cause what if He just Stop Ananias is if I mean I'm Listen, just saying I don't fool with I don't I'm just saying that's like, New Testament. We, we, didn't we talk about that? We, we were like that's New Testament. Yeah, because I think like we're we're presenting this idea of like a God like oh I'm gonna do this so you gonna do this. No, your yes to Jesus is a response to what He's already done. I choose to obey in response. Um, yeah. I love God in response yeah. to his love. Yeah. It's not I didn't start the conversation. He did. I'm responding to it. And so we have to like people are miss every everything in your life when you say yes to Jesus is about him. Not about you. Your wealth. Yep. Your purpose. Yep. Your position. Your influence. It's all for him. Yeah. Because here's the thing. Everything you get in this world gonna fade away. Yeah. So that has to mean that there's more to this life than just what I gained here. Yeah. There has to be a purpose. Yeah. And we don't have eternal mindsets at all. We live nope. for the moment, especially yep. our generation. Yeah. We that's why we ain't saving no money. Cause listen, I could die tomorrow, and you could die tomorrow. <laughs> so you could what die are you, in the next? <laughs> listen, five minutes. Like you could. Yeah. So what are you doing right now that is? That can be applied eternally. Yeah. Because that's what matters. Yeah. I, I, that's why I can't wait to read. So my next John Revere book is Driven by Eternity. I'm okay. going to get you that book. I'm going to get it to I'm going to send you. Because. I'm going to send it to you. John, that, slow no, down. <laughs> slow. And he, slow he's old. down. They're so old. They're so I know old. How they are ending up on our list today. But I'm grateful. But slow. Slow. Down. It's like John. Slow down. Slow down. 
So, so he said, so this book is about living with an eternity mindset. Yeah. And I think that that's so necessary right now because we are living in, in, <laughs> with a mindset of just 80 years mindset. Like, you, for, might you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you may not get the next eight minutes. Like, are you prepared? No, because you still ain't said yes. You still think it's your life. Okay, so tell me why. There's so many things. <laughs> yeah, you have five questions that you have not said. I know. <laughs> I know. There's so many things because I. Why do you feel? Oh, this is what I. This is what I'll just say, and you can tell me what you think. I was grieved after I got off the phone with you. <laughs> I was grieved. <laughs> I was grieved. <laughs> and not in a, obviously not in a bad way. I, I believe I'm grieved in a way we're supposed to be sure. grieved, right? And um, when we were on the phone, something that you said struck me when you were like, bro, like, who's discipling us? <laughs> You're like, we're really out here. Instagram and John Bevere's books. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. <clears throat> Who's decide? And when you said that, it it like triggered something so much in me because I do believe that like we can relate a lot in the sense of being yeah. in this space, being black millennial females yeah. in this space, being communicators of the of the gospel. Right? I'm not a pastor, nor am I a preacher. Brenda, shut up. I have drink a, your I'm water. Drinking my water. Drink your water. And, my, my and please drink your water but when it's on you drink your water and and when you said that i was like man you right like are they and now and now and the reason why it, it grieves me and i was like and not and this isn't everybody because there are some amazing people yeah, yeah. out there who really do love the lord who have reached out to be like i see you yes keep going praying for you all those things right but it made me think about the leaders that we look up to, right? And I'm like, the reason why we're not hearing holiness in the preaching anymore, the reason why we're not hearing about um, reverence of the Lord, repentance, is because we have a bunch of leaders who don't live holy lives. They don't live repentive lives. And I can't tell you something that I'm going to be held responsible for. <clears throat> I also think like I think that we are often distracted by gifts. Yeah. Like on both sides. I think that possibly nobody has reached out to disciple us cuz they like they good. Right. Clearly, <laughs> somebody must be discipling them. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me when you said that I was like Brenda, you really out here like like we are out here. I was discipling myself because I told you the other day on Instagram, somebody made me mad <laughs> and the old Brenda resurfaced and I had to get on my story and say, could y'all stop being weird in people's comments? And then I was like, Holy Spirit said, take that take down. Because <laughs> I always, it's something I have to, like a, a standard I hold myself to is like, if I say this, if I do this, if I go to this place, after I make that decision, can I offer them Jesus? Mm. And if I can't, it ain't for me. Yeah. Yeah. And that's tough because sometimes, like, I know I have friends that be like, Brenda, it'd be really <laughs> deep. Like, it's not that deep. It is. It is. For me, it is. I can't. The The weight of my calling is too heavy to just be frivolous with it. And I'm learning that. Like, because I like to be outside. And I'm learning in this season, the Lord is like, come in, daughter. You can't be outside. <laughs> I can't. That- I cannot go any. Bro. I went to a broad, like a Broadway play, right? Mm-hmm. But I, it, this is like somebody's gonna be like, Brenda, it's not that it is. <laughs> so I like wore, okay, I wore a blazer, but I don't wear like a shirt on because I'm outside. I'm trying to be 33, you know right? What I mean? It's like, and we're single. Soon as I got in the building, somebody said, Pastor Brenda. I said, <laughs> I can't go anywhere. I would have to go to Timbuktu to go outside. So literally. Okay, so I wave somebody from my Bible study. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, he worked at the theater. I said, hey, I go sit down oh. in my seat, <laughs> minding my business. <laughs> and the guy goes, I know you. I said, do you? 
because at this point, and I'm literally right. sitting in the thing like this the whole time. <laughs> he's like, yeah. Uh, uh, he's like, you preached that. Not you pre. <laughs> the whole time. Just... And he goes, when do you preach again? I just came to see the play by myself, you know, <laughs> and I needed to dress like I was by myself because we don't know who might be outside. <laughs> well, apparently the saints, Brenda. the saints were outside. And so I'm like, so now my friends are like, you can't go anywhere with us. They're like, no, because we Absolutely don't need to end not. up on the we, shade. Right. Room. We're talking about Pastor Brenda out in this. I said, Again, my life don't clearly my it life does not belong, belong to, to me. you. But it can I be honest with you? I have that was one of the areas where I feel like I knew the Lord was working on my heart because that I cared about what he thought about what I wore. Yep. I started to care. It matters. It matters. It matters. And somebody was like, but you yeah. It matters. But I I don't know if they felt uncomfortable. I felt uncomfortable because he didn't say Brenda. He said Pastor Brenda. Now, I'm not outside in that capacity, but that's the thing. You are. Calling is not subjective to a platform. It is who God, it's my nature. It's, and I have the ability to sway. I was just reading Ooh. a random scripture. It talked about like not allowing your knowledge to like send somebody off. Mm -hmm. Maybe like Second Corinthians. I literally opened my Bible and I was like, I didn't <clears> ask <throat> for this. Uh, just read your whole Bible. You might come across it. <laughs> um, but it was like that really got me because, right, I could have I could be mature enough to handle certain spaces mm -hmm. and certain things that they don't influence me. But the moment I go and I post now I've given somebody permission to go somewhere that they might not have the capacity to handle. Yeah. So I, w I, w I hold that. Man, you know what's crazy? Were we talking about this, Jordan? I think it was me and Jordan in the office talking about this because there was, um, you know, I saw... I'm trying to be mindful. No, I know. I, I know. You got to, got you to choose your words. You got to choose your words. Take, like, it, take, right. your, take your time. Um, Because there, because it's not, it's no shade, no condemnation at all. This is just an observation that I, that I saw and I thought it was interesting. Um, But like, when you are a leader or influencing people to know the Lord, mm -hmm. right? Pastors, whatever. What you said is so important. Like my yes to something, my permission to something by going to this concert, yeah. by listening to this music, yep. by wearing this outfit, that gives license yes. to people whether they're mature enough to deal with it or not. And, it's on and you. we have to be mindful of that. That's all. When I say I, this is why I really don't post on Instagram that much. Yeah, I have learned my lessons <clears throat> because I don't in any way want to be a stumbling block for sure because maybe and maybe you know maybe it's not a thing for me maybe i'm strong in an area but i don't know yeah like i can't i can't ignore my influence mm -hmm. and be like well i gotta live too no yep. this is this you, is this no, is the you life you don't gotta live you have to die, <laughs> die. daily is Brandon. what paul said and then we, I mean, because we, we be trying to make it about the big stuff. No, it's the little stuff. It's I, the little I stuff. I remember, I don't know if, I don't know if I get in trouble for this, but I went to yoga. I know, right? I went to yoga with the church people. Every time I tell this story, I need to tell that. I was going to a <laughs> church with the whites. <laughs> and they were all going to yoga. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to try hot yoga. Because they were like, you could never survive hot yoga. I was like, I feel challenged. <laughs> and I had never been to yoga because I don't really fool with stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I go to yoga, and it was one of the most spiritual experiences I've ever had in my life. I wept, and the only place I weep is in the presence of God. So I was very confused. Yeah. And I was like, a part of me felt like, you know, like, as black women, we carry stress in our bodies. And I was like, <laughs> I feel so free. And I was like, I'm going to do this all the time. I had posted on my story that I went to yoga. <clears throat> so I'm like, if I die, y'all know, because <laughs> I don't know it's going to be hot. I was with her. <laughs> 
And so, like, I come out of yoga. I'm like, man, it was, like, really cool, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I have a friend, like, my she's one of my best friends. She lives in Cleveland. And she comments and says, never go back there. And I'm like, bro, what happened? <laughs> I like, was like, Dang. it was good. You know, I didn't say not must stay. I said, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Cause I don't know what that means, and I'm not gonna be <laughs> fooling with stuff. And she was like, "No." So, um, when she said that, she was like, "It's worship, right?" So I'm like, "Oh, okay, that's crazy." I literally had shin spl- like sh- pain in my shins until I broke covenant. No. My pains in my shins, and I was like, "Why? Why is this happening?" So I started doing research. And obviously discovering that like yoga is rooted in Hinduism mm-hmm. and all the positions are actual are worth, deities. Yeah. And so, and the crazy thing is it was worship because I had the same experience I have in worship in that, that was what threw me. I was like, why is this a spiritual experience? Like what is happening? And th- now I have given everybody that follows me license to go to yoga because I didn't told them I went. And then I had to get right back on and say, hey, don't, don't do that. So when you say you broke covenant for all for anybody because who watches, meaning like I I didn't know what I had done, right, right, and so I just said God anything that I came into covenant with by being in that environment mm-hmm. by participating mm-hmm. in the practice of yoga, the fact that it's called a practice means it's not just an exercise; mm-hmm. it's rooted in something deeper than mm-hmm. that. And we are so deceived by culture because. Why are yeah. we going to yoga? Because yeah. somebody we saw somebody, somebody do, do it. it. We seen somebody yeah. we admire. Like, oh, they went to yoga. I should go to mm-hmm. yoga. It's like, no, don't go to yoga and stop doing stuff. And you don't know why you doing, doing it. it. We have to stop. We have we have to stop because you are engaging in things like my literal body was responding to something I had done, and I was completely unaware of it. And it wasn't until I prayed and said, God, I renounce any covenant that I made knowingly or unknowingly by participating in that environment and the pain was gone. And I believe the Lord allowed the pain because I wouldn't have paid attention, attention. to it. Oh my no, gosh. No, it was crazy. So <clears throat> I'm reading this book. Have you heard of Crazy Love by Francis Chan? No. I'll send you that one. Too. I need to be friends with Megan. She read a lot because I'm struggling with this one book and she didn't name five of them since I've been sitting here. This is, this this, is new for me. Okay. I hate no, reading. I'm going to read a lot because the Lord is changing my life this yes. year so now i won't have i'll have time because you're not outside i'm about to be i don't even want to talk blazers. about it because i'm still proud and no shirts underneath it's so crazy <laughs> <laughs> he said because who did you think you were he i'm said, i feel like sometimes god be publicly embarrassing me on purpose because why would you even come outside like that i can't post a picture because then I know you took them. Mm-hmm. You was like, oh, I'm posting these things. It was because I got in. They gave me the tickets to go to the things. I was supposed to post about it. Well, the Lord said no. I'm screaming. Okay, so so I'm reading this book, Crazy Love, and it's um in one of the chapters in chapter four, he talks about being lukewarm. And it's a heavy chapter. I'm sure. And so I'm reading this with my Patreon community, and we're all in the chat, like, anybody throw their book away. Because it's, it's heavy, right? I don't even know why you're telling me about this book. Oh, yeah. You're going to read it. You, you need to read it. It's 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 going to bless it's gonna bless you. So especially as you're reading all of God. Oh, my gosh. Or if you do back. Oh, oh my gosh. you're trying to even read them at the same time. I'm just saying. I, listen here. I'm just No. Saying, <laughs> you're like, I'm in school. I'm a pastor. No. So listen. So one part, one part in the chapter four, we talks about lukewarm, being lukewarm. Something he said really struck a nerve with me because he said God's standard is now considered radical. Like the 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 bare, the bare minimum minimum of what God requires is now seen as oh you're a radical extreme. Christian. You're extreme. Y'all too deep. Child this we ain't got to no depths. We are at the shore. No that's is real. So what do you think that that it, obviously, right? This is been pro- this was prophesied, right? Yeah, yeah. In the end, in the end times, people are going to be lovers of themselves. They're going to be deceived. We're like we know all of this stuff, mm-hmm. right? We know this was going to happen. But how do you feel, or maybe what are your challenges with pushing back against that? Because I feel like sometimes it's hard. Like we're still people. At yeah. the end of the day, we're still human, so yeah. we still feel 
we still have a human experience where it's like, dang, yep. man, like, you don't want to offend anybody. Yep. Am I being too deep? Because I know me, like, especially after going through what I went through last year, I questioned myself so much. Yeah. I questioned my discernment. I questioned things that I know that God showed me. Because yeah. I'm like, maybe it's not that deep. Maybe I'm tripping. Yeah. Maybe it's like, so yeah. how do you balance it, that challenge? It is that deep. And I think two things. I think... um, well, I actually think a few things. The first thing I think is how we ended up here is that um, we've conditioned the standards to our comfortability. Mm. So it's like the standard of God is what I'm comfortable with. Mm. And over time, that's been established as a standard because somebody this is like I could do this much. Yeah. But I could still. I think there are a lot of things that play into that, mm-hmm. like wanting to be accepted your money because. When you talk about churches, you got to talk about money mm-hmm. and they don't want to disrupt their money. Mm-hmm. So they're not going to hold you to the standard they should hold you to because they don't want to disrupt their money. Jesus. And so that is like a huge thing. Yeah. Right. But I think for me and how I'm navigating that, I think what was once just a conversation I would have with my friends is now feeling like a burden. Yep. So it would be something I would just talk to my friend who is as deep as me and we just have back and forth mm-hmm. conversations like, ooh, I can't. And, and we mm-hmm. understand each other. It's like, how does anybody ever discover this standard if it's never set? If it's never lived out? Yeah. And so now it's become a responsibility. Yeah. And I remember I um I had I was talking to a newer friend and they were kind of asking me like what I thought about something. Mm -hmm. And I had very strong opinions about what I, what they were asking me, Mm -hmm. but because they were a new friend and I didn't know how they were going to accept it. I I mean, I really did it back. Yeah. And then I remember (laughs) them saying the conversation, I like try to go a little Mm -hmm. bit. It's like, but we don't want to judge. I say, Oh, let me pull that back. Yep. And I remember leaving that dinner and God saying, you just compromised truth and he said how can i trust you to say truth on a platform in a room full of people you admire in a room full of people that you feel like are older than you more wiser than you and i can't trust you to hold the weight of truth in a conversation and after that moment i did it that wrecked me i'm like because i'm like gives me chills overcoming perfectionist (laughs) And I don't like to mess up. I re- it breaks my heart when I feel like I disappointed God or mm-hmm. I let him down. Mm-hmm. And when when he said, I I felt myself, because con- I knew what I thought. Yeah. I thought that what we were talking about was completely wrong. Yeah. And it's not judgment when I'm holding you to the standard by which you said you wanted to live. Yeah. You said you were a follower of Jesus. Yeah. You think I, I'm not. And, some, and they'll try to play like the pastor card. First of all, I'm not even a pastor. Okay. Let's start there. Second of all, this your same standard. Standard, bro. Th- these are principles, principles of what it means to be a disciple. Well, people Which, not being <laughs> disciples, so this. Well, that's how we got here, man. That's how we got here. The same thing, been, but yeah, no, I think, but seriously, yeah. and I've seen the fruit of truth though. Like in this, yeah. I have like a friend, and like we were we were butt heads all the time because she would say something, and I'd be like, bro, you shouldn't be doing that. Mm. And here's the thing. It's not my job to make her change her mind. Yeah. It's only my job to speak the, the truth. truth. Whatever you do with it is on yeah. you. But yeah. I'm compromised if you say something I don't agree with it and I just let them that's, live. I, that's wrong. Back to that account. I keep that at the forefront of my <laughs> mind. Before a decision, I'm like, I don't want this one on my account. Let, let me. I don't. I don't. I'm going to speak truth. And I've seen her on her own deal with God and make different decisions. Yeah. But I'm responsible for the seed. Yeah. Or I'm responsible to water a seed that somebody else planted. Yeah. But I got to give you truth. You could do whatever you want to do with it. Yeah. But I'm a... But I, and the problem, I feel like, a, well, part of the problem is, is that we are giving license to multiple truths. Ah. You got a truth. They got a truth. He got a truth. Jesus this- is the only truth. And if it don't align with... Jesus is not going to approve something that goes against himself ever, ever. But, and, and, but, and this is why, Brenda, <laughs> this is why, this is why I'm so encouraged by you. Like, I'm like, I'm grateful. I'm a really emotional person, so I apologize. It's okay. But I'm so grateful that we were able to connect because you have no idea how much you encourage me. Oh, and encourage my faith as I'm doing this yeah. because 
when you're in this position, it can feel really lonely. I completely understand. Like that. lonely. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't I don't have, you know, there's not a lot of people that can be close to this. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And it's not that you don't like. It's not that you don't have friends because you do. You yeah. need friends. We need people. Yeah, I got a lot of friends. I have a lot and of. Then friends. I have a friend who gets it. You see what I'm I saying? Have, I have literally yeah. because I was just telling you before we started. I'm like I'm out here making real life decisions, and we gotta talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, bro, who can? Who's gonna understand this? Like because I can't. Everybody not going to get it. Somebody's mm-hmm. gonna tell me, Brenda, you being it, too deep. It, like. My friend had, oh, I was so mad. My friend had a Galentine's Day party. I was ready when shopping, went to get my makeup done. And God said, now you know. Because I was, I was in consecration. So it's like, wow. I was salty. Wow. And I'm like, I have a friend that I could talk to yeah. that's going to encourage me in making this decision. So, yeah. Like, she's not going to go, now, Brenda. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I have friends who did that. <laughs> And I'm a, I respect them for being right. those friends. Right. And then there's another friend that I can say, like, yeah. bro, this is getting harder mm-hmm. because now I'm I'm feeling the separation. Yeah. I'm feeling the what it means to be set apart. Yeah. And I feel that so like strongly in this season. Like I'm about to Exodus chapter thirty four go up with the Lord for 40 days and they would be like, where did Brenda go? Right. Like I, if it's he- yesterday, I felt the weight of it. Yeah. So tell, so tell her, tell us what happened yesterday. All right. So, <laughs> so like a week ago, I thought I was just doing a normal podcast interview <laughs> and in the conversation. Well, actually I have to start with that Monday. I was on a like leadership call with um some leaders from black voices movement. Oh. They're like circuit writers. So I was just like pouring into them. And they're sharing testimonies because they're on tour, like college tour. Mm -hmm. And they share a story about a girl who's like doesn't want to pledge in a sorority. And basically her parents have disowned her because she doesn't want to pledge and are pretty much like, don't call home unless it's an emergency. That in itself should have been a red flag. For sure. (laughs) So I'm like, not over something that, all right, she ain't pregnant. She ain't. You know what I'm saying? She just is making a decision that's best for her life. That's crazy. Parents. Don't um, call home. Don't call home unless it's an emergency. And so basically they were saying like she was she kept saying like I don't feel like it's what I'm supposed to do. Like it's not for me. And they're like rejoicing on the call. So said person who's in a sorority sitting on the call like oh we don't do that. We don't do sorority and fraternities. Got it. So I'm just sitting there and I'm like this is really weird mm-hmm. like that this is coming up. So then fast forward that was Monday. Fast forward to Friday I get in a call a, like a podcast interview and this girl is just asking me random questions about purpose and all this mm-hmm. stuff and somehow ends up saying like oh I you know recently uh, renounced my sorority and I'm like so she's talking to me and in my head I'm like hey bro what you after? Like, because there is a way somebody can say something where, you know, it's not, mm-hmm. it's not them. random. It's or, like, yeah, it's yeah. like God's using them to say this, yeah. but it's really him being after yeah. you. It's an invitation. Yeah. And so I finally just at the end of it, I said, like, could you tell me what sorority it was? It was the same sorority I was in. And I was like, oh, this is crazy. And so I kind of like hear her out. Mm-hmm. I've been in the sorority since 2011. So almost like 13 years. Mm -hmm. And I've never wanted to have a conversation about it. Like, Mm -hmm. I never felt like I did anything that went against God, Mm -hmm. like in my process and anything. And I'm just like, I don't want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. People be real aggressive and they stepped into a new truth. Mm -hmm. And now they like, I'm going to hell if I don't accept the truth. And I don't like that. Yeah. (laughs) I don't like the way it makes me feel. (laughs) So I'll just be. And then people, I always get DMs. Mm -hmm. I always get comments like, what do you think about Christians and sororities and fraternities? And I'm like, I don't. I don't think about it. I don't think about it. Yeah. You should talk to God about that. Yeah. He knows. <laughs> and so I ended up yesterday listening to the podcast because the girl sends me a podcast she did and it's like an hour. I listen to it. I cry. I hear her say things about an oath that I took. Here's the thing she said to me that that could have been the only thing in the podcast and I still would have made the same decision. She says, <clears throat> she's talking about like some things that happened in the process and she goes, when you show up to an altar without a sacrifice, you know what that means? You're the sacrifice. And I said, hmm? <laughs> and then she said, yeah, she said, we say something to the extent of like, this is forever. 
until the day of judgment. I said, I said what? And then she was like, yeah. And then we said something like we take this oath um, in in front of the eternal spirit of truth. And that eternal spirit of truth is capitalized. I only know one truth and he ain't okay with that oath. <laughs> and I was, oh, to be completely my. honest, I was devastated. And I was like, because that wasn't your intention. It wasn't my intention. And I was like, God, I have been in covenant with Satan. And the crazy. And it's that deep. That's what I'm saying. You bro. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm it not, is I'm not that, trying to. No, it, it is. It's that actually deep. that. And I'm, I, I don't know anything about that life, no, sorority, and fraternity. I don't, my family is. They know about that because they're yeah. in they're in those um, organizations, but I don't. I've never went through the process and didn't know. No. Any, but it is that. It deep. is that deep, and I like. I'm gonna talk about it in depth. Like I, she sparked. Like now, I'm like, no, I want to know because all right, yeah, because you try to play me, <laughs> so I'm not going. Like yeah. it's just like, and I want people to be free because I was one of those people to be like, nah, bro, I never did anything. You did all things that went against God because He says you shall have no other God before Me. Mm. It's not just the idol you resurrect by being in the organization. You literally come into cover. You you took an Oh, bro, that alone, it's like, what the heck was I? I was so naive, but here's the kicker. And here's why I love God so much. And I can only be frustrated with myself because I pledged spring of 2011 and fall of 2012. I tried to denounce my letters because I felt like it was what God was asking me. I didn't have any revelation of the deep mm-hmm. things of God. I had just got really serious about my relationship with God. And it was the first thing he asked me for. In 2012. And here I am. 12 years later. And you officially Oh, denounced. last night with the quickness <laughs> sent an email to the organization and said, I'm renouncing this because it goes against my beliefs in Jesus. Wow. And I want my name off a roll. Because the only book I want to be written in is the, <laughs> the Rams. Rams book of life. <laughs> I don't want to see my name nowhere else. The crazy thing is the um, a while ago, my friend had a dream where God showed her a principality in Los Angeles, right? Mm-hmm. Within Hollywood. And she says the name and I go, whoa, that is a goddess that exists on the shield of the sorority I was in. I said, how I'm going to have authority in a city and I'm in covenant with its principality. Bro, it's that deep. It's that deep. Well, I am. To be in covenant means we became one. One. And the thing is, God honors covenants. Even if they are with another, another God, God. he honors them. <laughs> nah, so I'm going to let you. Nah, bro. I can't. I can't do. I literally, I start. <laughs> and then I like, I said Megan this sermon because I'm always doing that to people. <laughs> and in the sermon, he was saying like, well, he was kind of calling out America. He I can't said, wait to watch it. Our preachers are defiled, right? Bro, I was, I didn't, at first when I was watching, I was like, they show large child. Me too. Defiled. <laughs> I literally was on the phone with my best friend like, have <laughs> we been preaching a doctrine of demons? What have we done? And I'm like, everybody asking. How did Satan get in the church? We brought him because we're in covenant with him. Because I bet you you could go down the list of your pastor or a pastor you've had, and they're either a Mason or in some black Greek letter organization. That's scary. That is scary. That is scary. And we use language like oaths and altars and eternal spirit of truth. And homegirl... That is the goddess is supposed to be the goddess of wisdom. No, wisdom comes from one place. Okay. But the fact, and then it's like founded on Christian principles. Satan knows scriptures. Right. We shouldn't be impressed. Right. Where is Jesus in this? Right. Nah, bro. I can't. I want to know parts with the quickness. I'm telling y'all, I listened to the podcast at five o'clock. Okay. The email went out while I was waiting <laughs> on the plane. Cause I I don't fool with that, and I'm gonna go through some deliverance. Absolutely, uh, for sure. Oh, oh I, I already <laughs> got my mama on the phone. Hey, can you send me this prayer? And I know you got a prayer of denouncing in this book that you got. <laughs> can you take a picture of that? Send and, it to me. And I got to go to Chicago because I need to get some real deliverance. I'm sorry. 
I need it off me. I need, I no, I cannot play, bro. Because lives, can you imagine? And there's a grace of God because I was not knowledgeable. But yes. now that I am, and, yeah. it's like, I don't want to be imparting that into yes. other people. Oh no, my God. bro, I can't. I just have to say, like, it's so courageous of you. And I know you're doing it out of obedience. So for I'm sure. not trying to like, I know this is, this yeah, came no. from God. Yeah, but yeah. I'm just saying still for you, because you said you're in a season of saying, like you've been in a season of saying yes yeah, to the Lord. I, you, know, you know, I came really quickly. Cause like, it's, it's that, crazy. I'm just like, that is going to help so many people who probably feel the same way towards yeah. it and don't know how to articulate it, don't know. Maybe I'm just tripping. It's not that deep. No, it is. It is that deep. Bro, here's the crazy Here's the crazy thing. So <clears throat> when I was in college, we were bringing in a line. But while we're bringing in the line, I was kind of like teetering on like walking away. Mm-hmm. And I remember there was a girl who was in gospel choir with me. And I remember telling her like, be careful what you get involved in. The nerve of me. <laughs> Right. And I'm like, like, be sure. Child, she was one of the ones who told and the line never made it through. And I I was thinking about that the other day. Like, first of all, the Lord didn't want me to be initiating anybody into anything because I don't need that blood on my hands. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, but the fact that it was one of the girls that I didn't have a little (laughs) undercover conversation with. Child, I didn't mean in the line and I was going to be kicked out of school. All right. And once again, the Lord was trying to spare me. Right. That's why I'm telling you when it comes to obedience, you don't have a choice. Mm. You do. Death. That's the reality of it. That's like, the reality. It, and I, it ain't always natural. It will yes. be a spiritual one. Yep. And you wonder why you dry. And you wonder why you can't sit for two minutes to pray. You wonder why there's a disconnect. You wonder or why you got I can't anxiety hear. or yeah. you depressed. But yes. All of those things. You probably are in rebellion. Wow. Because God gave you an instruction and you didn't do it. And it don't have to be this massive quit your job. It could have been, hey, that person that you don't like at your job, buy them coffee for the week. That part. And you can't do it because you in your flesh. Making decisions that only make you feel good. Mm. I'm sorry, but if you want to follow Jesus, you might want to get over that. Because you're probably never going to feel good about the things he asked you to do. Because do you think I wanted to get on my Instagram story last night and tell the people that I was, you know. I didn't even see that. If I, I would have saw that. And I, I cried a little bit. And I don't cry, bro. But I literally, my heart was broken in the yeah. fact that I would take an oath against God. Oh, my gosh. Like, I I feel, I literally called my best friend. She still, we talked for like an hour and she still hasn't called me back yet. <laughs> she was like, this is a lot. Cause you be, you be dropping stuff on people and they don't be having the capacity. You <laughs> yeah, have to ask. She remember. didn't. She didn't know what she was in for. She's also, you know, in the process of renouncing because it. I didn't even call her for that. I just wanted to make sure that that one dream she had was that, and then it just oh, all spilled out. And my she was like, "Gosh," she was like, "You said what in your oath?" I'm like, "Yeah," and then I'm like. The fact that we, I can't remember. That was the part that got me. I you cannot said you can't remember. remember crossing the sands. I can't remember what I said. You, I you said you didn't remember the rituals. I didn't like remember you, none of that. I didn't read. And you have to memorize it. I didn't retain any of it. I cannot remember. And I used to always say, like, that was the Lord protecting me. And it's like, no, dummy. <laughs> was Satan hiding it? Because if I would have remembered what I was pronouncing, yeah. then I would have instantly been like, oh, I got to get out of this. And I know my my line sisters, I don't know if I can still call them that, being a renounced, you know. <laughs> but I'm sure they are going to. They're probably going to watch this <laughs> and go, wow. wow. So, hey, bro, let me tell you this. The same thing I said on my story. I'm not here to argue with you. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Yeah. Because when you go before Jesus, you're going to go on your own and yep. I'm going to go on my own. And I'm telling you. I don't want covenants with Satan on my account. At all. (laughs) What? What? Like, first of all, I'm like, in my head, shocked if if I had got to heaven and that was on my account. I'd be like, nah, uh Jesus. I didn't do that. I didn't do that. And he's like, yeah, you did. You did. You did. You did that. And you missed all the warnings. Uh, And you missed all the ways I was trying to get you delivered uh, from this. And bro, this ain't new. It's literally the Israelites. This is why they 11 day journey was 40 years because they kept getting caught up in the systems of the world Mm -hmm. and what every, what their culture around them Mm -hmm. was doing. And God's like, I'm the only God. Yeah. 
And he Brenda. is, bro. I didn't even, I don't know why you got me here acting like this. I was supposed to be on my best behavior. There are just so many things that, first of all, I could talk to you all day because there's so For there's sure. so much, right? I'm like, where have you been my whole life? <laughs> um, so there's so much, but I'm just thankful for you, like, truly. And after our call the other day, I was like, again, you have no idea how much you just encourage me mm-hmm. in this space, especially just as a, as a woman, as but especially being like, there's not a whole lot of us out there. Yeah. And so, and, and we're, it's just new territory. Things are different. Things are yeah. intense and the grieving is real. The burden feels heavy. For sure. Um, and to be able to have somebody that I can reach out to and be like, bruh, you feel that? Listen. Because, All right, cool. Because I'm just making sure it ain't just me. Because, because, you know? because do you be, I'll be watching stuff on Instagram and I'll be like, I was like, I want to throw why my, I can, This is why I can't be on it like that. My, well, because I want to respond. I do too. I and want to. Like, I'd be like, the Lord ain't released me yet. And you know why he didn't release me? Because I was in covenant <laughs> with Satan. <laughs> he said, you gonna go out there trying to challenge Satan. And Satan gonna be like, you belong to me. <gasps> oh, my. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sound man, because I will do all the screaming. But this is how I be processing things. The- well, I'm so happy that you are not in covenant with Satan. No. Sure. No, no. And we're all thankful for that. We are all we so are grateful all for that. And I love, this is what I love about God, though. Because, you know, it'd be the people that always be trying to check the other people, mm-hmm. like, how they not living. It's like, did God deal with you first? Because this, this, this is my whole season of that. Did God deal with you first? Damn and I me. literally, like, I had a conversation. And I'm like, there are a lot of things that God has given me to say. He hasn't released me yet, but I'm going to start with me. Mm-hmm. And... I started with, hey, my heart was far from God. Yeah. Hey, I'm getting caught up in this. And now we're talking about yeses. And yesterday I was like, I don't want to say yes to this next season of my life because he's like, get out of here. Ooh. Go into it. It's the fact that Exodus chapter 34, first of all, it's the first chapter I ever had to write a research paper on. I don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> but it's like that whole like conversation. Y'all should read it. But it's like G- God is calling Moses up, mm-hmm. but he's about to restore the covenant they broke after they built the golden calf. Yeah. And I'm like the irony of mm-hmm. my life <laughs> in this moment. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, it's time. And yeah. I was driving yesterday and he was like, you're falling in love with the world. And I said, I can't own that. Wow. And whatever it takes. So go ahead and separate me from what you think I'm falling in love for. Let's go do for it. it. Do Bro, it. none of this stuff matters. He he could take it all because he the one that gave it, it to me. Because mm-hmm. people be like, what's your strength? Bro, I don't got one. I posted a video. Next thing I know, I'm here. People. I'm like, could y'all unfollow me? Because I can feel the pressure of 100,000 eyes on me. I'm losing it. <laughs> what is happening? I'm like. For sure. No. For sure. And I, bro, this do not matter. Yeah. And I'm like, God, and I'm like, I, it's the mercy of God yeah. that would say, I got to pull you out of this yeah. before no, you lose And no matter yourself. what it takes. And that's what, that's when you get to a certain place with the Lord, even when your heart is far, right? Because yeah. we have those times For where sure. our hearts are far from him. Yeah. I was experiencing that just a couple weeks ago where I was just like you know, angry. And I felt like my heart was far from the Lord. Um, and because I didn't trust him and I knew I didn't trust him. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I like so bad, like I had cried myself to sleep, like embarrassing crying myself to sleep. (laughs) You know, I can't do this anymore. Please. You can take the, take the podcast. I don't want it. I don't want, you know, I was like, just take it all. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to be responsible. I don't want people to know me. I don't want any of this. Mm -hmm. Just like, I'll like, I just want to forget the last 33 years. <laughs> Not all 30. I mean, but most of them. Like, I just want to, especially the last couple years, yeah, like yeah. the last five years. I'm like, Lord, I just want to forget the last five years and just start over and I just pretend nothing ever happened. I don't need a platform. I don't want a podcast. I don't want to be known to yeah. anybody. And I'm just like crying and I wake up and like embarrassed because I, I literally cried myself to sleep. And I felt like the Lord was just like, when you finish. You don't trust me. Mm. You don't trust me. Yeah. And 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 
and I will continue to allow this friction and this frustration until you learn, until you learn to trust yeah. me. You have to trust yeah. me. You yeah. know what I mean? And I, I think that it's just important that we get to a place where knowing, if, even knowing that it might be painful, but God, do do whatever you need to do yeah. to keep me. Whatever you need to do. Yeah. Whatever relationships you got to close. Because he's able to do that. Because he's able. He's and able he, to do that. And he wants us to desire him above everything. Do you know what I mean? Like I Moses said, don't even take me. He if said, your presence, forget about the forget promise. That. I said, Moses, you might want to check with the Israelites. I don't know if they feel the same way. He didn't <laughs> he care. He, he said, said, do not yeah. take us. And that the amazing thing about that story is God wasn't removing himself from Moses. Mm -hmm. He said, I, I got you. He said, no. And it you have you have to have that kind of mindset because your life is not about you. you. He could have been like, cool, God, let's go. No, 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 no. All of the people that God created you to lead, to yes. influence, to impact, yes. your decisions yes. matter for them. And you got to hold the weight of that. And it's our job to, the reason I'm always telling the truth, I don't care how it make anybody feel. The last time I did a podcast though, and I cried, I, would, I literally, they said cut and I balled up because I felt so naked. Ooh. I felt so like, dang God, you ain't have to strip me in front of, you know, all the people. <laughs> people. You know what I'm saying? We could have had this first and then <laughs> told about it. Right. And I felt like I've never felt like that, but it's like, this darn book. <laughs> and all I could hear was John Bevere saying, he who fears the Lord has nothing to hide. Ooh wee. And I was like, you right, bro. And it's like, I feel like my me sharing my journey is also humanizing me. So mm -hmm. you know I'm not a God. Yep. And I'm definitely not your God. Yep. And that's our responsibility. Yep. Like, I think about there's a story in Acts with the centurion man. And, mm -hmm. like, he has a dream and Peter has a dream. And when Peter comes to his house, he he starts bowing. Peter said, uh-uh-uh. Yeah. The Lord did this. Mm -hmm. And I always stand on that because I need you to know it ain't me, bro. I'm raggedy. Filthy. Okay? Filthy. I be wanting to say that on every, like, hi, what's up, guys? I'm, I'm trash. Megan Ashley. I'm trash. <laughs> every, my... like, think of every p yeah. worst possible case scenario, and I need you to see me yeah. like that because I am not no. your, I'm not no. your God. I'm not your, he, That's him. why I got to point you to Jesus. Him. And I'm going to let you know we on the same path pursuing him to and get, pursuing the sanctification on, but i ain't got it all figured out and every time i hit it i'm a, i just told you the lord said i was falling in love with the world and i'm i don't want no parts of that and he's not lying i can feel it i can yeah. sense it i can tell in my decisions i yeah. can tell when i want to go somewhere why i want to go there why mm. i want to be there now nah, whatever we got to do because you the only thing that matters. You're the only thing that matters. Because I don't want to be in a position where I don't say something because of how it's going to make someone Somebody feel. Somebody feel. Because that's the enemy's tactic. Get you some friends that exist in other spaces. And now you don't want to say truth because you don't want to offend, offend nobody. The gospel's offensive. Because the Lord be offending me every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Open it up. Chin checking me. Open it up. The Bible is not, oh, I don't know how y'all read this and come out with abundant life. <laughs> how do you read this and, and it's your haters and your next blessing? How do you read this and conclude that everybody going to be a millionaire by the time 2024 over? I don't, um, I don't know. We got to stop. Because I believe the Bible, to, and we, oh, we're big on this. Yeah, we need to wrap it up, but I'm, yeah. we're Because <laughs> we're going to be here all day. No, seriously, because <laughs> we're big on the whole generational wealth and da-da-da-da-da, and being rich and being a boss. But the Bible says that it's it's so hard for a wealthy man to enter the kingdom of God. It's like a camel going through the eye of a needle. But everybody want to be rich. I don't want to be a camel going through a needle. I I I want to have money, but I don't want money to have me. Not in that I want to live a yeah, life of abundance, for sure. but only that God gave yes, me. Yes, and that I, so I can steward the Stu stuff I, that he so entrusted me. Because yes. all of this stuff costs money. Cost. <laughs> it costs money. Absolutely. My, and I'm, I'm, man. Like, I'm like, Lord, you, you said quit the job. Job, money, <laughs> make it make sense. Okay. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, but I, to your point, I think like, man, it's like when we walk, when we receive Jesus, it's literally 
us showing up without yeah. a sacrifice because we are the sacrifice. Yeah. And it's saying, I'm giving my life, my plan, my will, my emotions, what you want to do. Whatever you, your will. Literally. And even if it means the thing I waited for my entire Tired. life, Oof. that I got to walk away from it, you're worth that. What you've done for me is worth, worth. Yep. the response of my life. Yeah. It, Every time. No questions asked. Yeah, because it because here's every the thing. time it ain't just one time. It it's never just one time. It is a consistent every life day. of again every day, again, yeah, every day clearly. dying every day. Yeah, no, it's okay. I know. Sorry, they like Brandy's wrap like wrap it. it. Okay, uh, okay. So promise me you'll come back. Okay, come on. Just promise me you'll come back. Atlanta's like second home, and I'll come to LA. Come on, we you can gotta, hang out. Yes. I need to come out there anyway. Like soon, I need to come out there soon, but. Tell everybody what you're doing, where they can find you. Do you have anything coming up? Like, tell them all the things no, before bro, we get no, out of here. No, shut it all down. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you yeah, know, um, I am Brenda Palmer on everywhere. That's it's the same handle. Um, I have a podcast, Life in Perspective, um, which is the Lord's podcast because I just be doing <laughs> stuff. You yeah, know, I don't have anything coming up right now. Like I'm working on my first book, but it doesn't come out till next year. Yay. That's that exciting. Is, it is exciting and very intimidating. I can't wait. I added some more. Because yeah. you know I like to read books. We will, we will make sure. We can <laughs> you, do a whole you thing. Read the I, got book. You. I got you. I got you. I will help no. you with the book tour. Whatever you need. No, I will. Sure. I got you. Yeah. And so I have um, pop-ups um, called Come Alive. And when are you doing the next one? Probably. So we're... We're working on tour. We're okay. gonna announce it March first. Okay. So, but we're doing Atlanta, Houston. Let me know how DMV, I can support New York. You got pull up. I'm coming. New York. Yeah. Um, and then I want to do London. No, tell me. No, tell me when you want to go because I want to go to London. Like, no, I want to go this year and I want to do For something sure. out there. Do you want to go? Yes. Don't really, play with me, bro. I'm serious. It's on camera because if the, you don't you go, said, you're lying. You're lying. I'm gonna pull I'm back not lying. No, for sure. I want to. I want to do London. Let's I go. Feel that in my spirit. Let's go. Let's do it. Okay. No problem. It's I will literally done. make it happen. Now, first of all, it's, it's gonna like, it's gonna happen because they're gonna harass us. Harass. <laughs> the fact that it's been said on there. Um, you said you it. said. Okay, no. so we're gonna do it. Y'all heard sure. it first. We're gonna go. We're gonna do it because I I've been wanting. I've been saying that to Jay and Jordan and all yeah. of them. I've been saying because like, you're gonna, gonna host like a conference or something, right? <clears throat> I saw you on your uh, store, your live. I was in the comments saying host it, Meg. Oh, you didn't know me then. Talk about the burden thing, bro. When you be snapping about stuff, it's because you you probably the answer to it. <clears throat> we didn't come here for that. Got it. <laughs> you said you wanted me to stream. All right. Y'all, we are so thankful that y'all joined us um on this podcast. And we are grateful for Pastor Brenda Palmer, <laughs> who has It's been an honor, Pastor Meg. <laughs> Love it. I'm glad that I finally met somebody I could do this to. <laughs> because it's always being done to me. Oh, wow. Just look at that. Seed time and harvest. Love that. We want to um, make sure you guys follow Pastor Brenda on all her platforms. <laughs> Watch her all of her sermons because that's what she does. She preaches. And we want you guys to join us back here next week where I will be talking. Oh, that's what, it, that's what it is? And she will be preaching. Can somebody look up the definition of preach? Nobody. nobody. Oh, they got Jalen. He got. Are it. you kidding Jaylen. me? <laughs> wow. Jordan, Jordan had it. Jordan had it. J Jordan, deliver a sermon or what? Wow. Wow. Look at that. In totality, is a is a Christian pop. Hmm. Typically a church. Typically. But what's a church? <clears throat> hmm? The body of Christ. Thank you guys for joining us. <laughs> With Pastor Meg. She'll be back next week to preach you a sermon here. 